Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to another Full Compass Full Access webinar where we bring you the industry experts to talk about the subjects you have chosen to learn about. So uh, first things first, introduction. My name is Jim Rip. I'm the manager of technical training and sales development here at Full Compass Systems. Yes, I am live here in Full Compass Studio One. Coming to you live, it's nice and snowy and cold and icy outside, but warm in here. A uh, few things before we get started here. Uh, just some housekeeping to let you know about. Uh, we have a question feature available to you uh, during the webinar. Absolutely type in your questions. Uh, we have a couple of special guests today here that would be more than welcome to answer your questions. Uh, most of those we will answer near the end of the webinar after the presentation, but you know, if they're important enough, we'll just jump right in there and do it. Uh, a recording is also available for you on our YouTube channel in case you have to duck out part way through. So no worries there. And there's a very, very short survey, which uh, we ask you only two questions. And that is where you get to choose the next subject for the upcoming webinars. So without any further ado, um, let's bring on our guest today. We have uh, Sean Redbeard McLaughlin from Audio Biz and John Mickle from Full Compass. John is our a, a pro audio specialist here at Full Compass Systems. I am going to unspotlight my video so we can see all of you nice and clearly. How's how's that? All right, so guys, how you doing? We're doing great, I'm Jim. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I, th I, th I th the delay there. <laughs> guys, do you have your coffee yet? Come on, guys. Oh, sorry, right. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> All right, so first things first, John. Uh, you, John is a member of our my technical team here at uh, Full Compass, and he comes to the table with a lot of a lot of pro audio uh, background. So tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Yeah, I've uh, I've been working in pro audio as a producer, a performer, and a technician for roughly around 10 years now. Uh, I got a degree in audio engineering from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, did a stint at Sweetwater for a while, and uh, now I've made my home here at Full Compass teaching and learning audio gear. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. <clears throat> and now the 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 real the real guy, Red the Beard. Real, the We've real guy. You, yeah. He he's he's a uh, well-known in the YouTube community uh, in mm -hmm. in all his videos. So Sean, welcome. Good to have you back. We've had you on here probably 10, 15 times. It's awesome. I always enjoy it. And the beard changes every, you know, every event, <laughs> you know, it, it gets longer, it gets shorter, you know, it's kind of one of those we, things. I think we have people showing up once they see your name, just to see what the beard looks like this time. Well, exactly. As I mean, it is famous. I'm, I, I did realize that I have now pigeonholed myself and I can never shave. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, branding. Yes, yeah. All right. So a little bit about your back background, Sean, and then we'll let you take it away. So, uh, I work for a company called audio biz where, uh, one of the manufacturers reps, uh, in the area here and task is one of the brands that we represent amongst others. Uh, I have been in the pro audio industry since the, uh, ripe age of about 15. Uh, I decided I wanted to get into pro audio, uh, when I was at church cause I didn't want to pay attention. So I was like, Hey, the soundboard looks kind of cool. Uh, and that launched a, a long career, uh, did several years at full compass. It's kind of something Sounds like I'm, you know, went to prison or something like that. But um, <laughs> it worked at Full Compass there for a while, uh, doing a lot of different things, uh, and now have been doing the rep thing. I also mix sound on the side. I uh, do it at my church. I do production. Uh, I love to use the gear that we sell, so it uh, keeps me keeps me grounded. I guess I would say. Awesome. Well, I think we lost uh, John's video there. John, you can come back online. That's fine. Awesome. Great. We'll, we'll we'll stay here and and keep our eyes on Sean just just in case things go <laughs> off the rails. <laughs> he tends so, to get a little yeah. wild in these webinars. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so today, Sean, we're going to be talking about uh, Tascam Mixcast Four. This is a really cool piece of gear. You gave us a private uh, training on this. It, it, it's amazing. Love it, John. You've had it in your hands for a little bit, haven't you? Tried it out. We, that was going to happen, but we had, we had a snowstorm and an ice storm up oh. here in Madison, so I wasn't able to get hands on with it. But uh, I, uh, Sean and I went over it last night in great detail. So uh, I, I was already familiar with this piece. I got a uh, I got a rundown of it when it came out a little while ago. So 
I'm good to go. So our attendees are all waiting with bated breath, Sean, to hear all about this. <laughs> oh. So we're going to mute our mics uh, and keep an eye on you during this whole presentation. We'll, and we'll, we'll pipe in with the questions. Folks, ask your questions at any time. Type those in to the question feature there, and we will interrupt Sean and, and ask those questions if needed. All right, all awesome. yours, Sean. Cool. Well, yeah, today we are talking about the Tascam Mixcast 4. Um, it came out a few months ago. We started shipping. Um, actually, the timing was perfect for this webinar. There was a firmware release uh, that is a free firmware release that uh, I just put on last night, uh, which added some new features uh, that came out over the last couple of months that people had been asking for. So um, just wanted to give you guys an overview. We've got a couple different camera shots here that we can show you the, the gear and give you a walkthrough. Uh, so let me switch to my overhead camera here. Um, so the Mixcast 4 is really designed for, um, you know, the podcasting market. Uh, I'm actually going through the Mixcast 4 right now. Uh, and Jim, I was going to mention this to you. We need to get this in your hands because you do your uh, streams of uh, your funness of playing the keyboard and singing songs. And this would be perfect for you because it oh, has I, all of these features. So I would love that. I have a live stream tonight. So... I don't, I, Snowstorm can't get it today, but absolutely yeah, in the well, future. We'll have to try that later on. <laughs> But the Mixcast 4, you know, it's designed for podcasting, but, you know, over the last couple of months, we've been seeing a lot of people that are actually starting to use this for other different things, um, small live productions, streaming events, corporate uh, events that people need an interface uh, and to be able to bring audio in. Um, I'm also going to turn myself on so I can be up in the corner. Uh, I think I'm up in the corner right now. Does that look good? Can you see me? Don't want to miss the, the red beard. So, um Looks so what good. we've got here is the the Mixcast Four, and what we or what we're looking at is the overhead shot. So we've got four uh, mic inputs. So this will allow you to have up to four guests on your podcast um, and interface with them. Uh, I'll show you the back panel a little bit here. I'll pull up a slide. Unfortunately, I don't have the camera image for that one. But um, so we've got our four inputs. Uh, we've got a USB input. So this is how I'm actually interfacing with uh, this webinar right now is I'm actually sending and receiving audio back uh, through the USB. So this gives you the functionality to bring in guests for your podcast that might be remote um, and have the ability to interface with them. Um, we also have a phone uh, input here that's actually a TRRS jack, so a tip ring ring sleeve, uh, which allows me to just plug a cell phone in. Uh, again, another way of bringing remote guests in, which makes it really easy and, and functional. Um, the one thing I really like is you've got independent control over these. So I can be having multiple guests in, I could be phoning someone in, I could be on Zoom with another person. You've got a lot of functionality there. Um, we also have a USB, or sorry, not USB, Bluetooth. That's the Bluetooth logo there. Uh, so the Bluetooth is actually allowing me to bring in audio uh, from a Bluetooth source. Right now I got my iPad hooked up. Um, we can hear some music very vibey. Uh, I also have the ducker on here so I can get the, that nice radio uh, over uh, dub so I can bring it down. It automatically pulls out that audio for me and when I stop it brings it back up. So kind of a cool feature. Again, that USB could also be used for bringing in a remote guest from a, even a third cell phone. So you can be connected and have tons of people on here. Uh, and then this last fader here, the one with the little uh, squares on here is actually for my sound pads. Uh, so I've got uh, eight different pads that can be used for all different things. We'll dive into that here. So it's it's the coolest feature, and uh, just for John, John wanted to have the uh, air horn. So that's got the air horn. So let's go. <laughs> on these pads, so one of the cool things about the pads, there are some built-in sounds like we've got there um, that are built in, but I also have eight banks of eight, so I can actually load my own sounds in there and do that. So like I recorded this earlier. Oh yeah. So it was just something I quickly added uh, into uh, the Mixcast, and we can kind of go over that a little bit later here. Um, also kind of looking at the, the layout here, um, up at the top here above all of the channels, which is this is one of the things that I love about Tascam is they really thought about the layout of this device. 
um, and they were coming from it from a pro perspective. Uh, some of the other competitive products on the marketplace have buttons in not the best locations, so you can accidentally mute things and, and, and do stuff like that. So Taskime had the forethought to put that all on the top. So we've got a, a mute button for every channel. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to mute myself, but they light up uh, red, although I might be over that mute button. So you can see there's a mute button that's lighting up. Um, below that, we also have a solo button. Uh, so the solo button is uh, kind of a cool feature in that you can set up to have pre-fader or post-fader. Um, so when you've got it set up pre-fader, um, it gives you the ability to solo a channel. So like if I'm queuing up some music, um, but I don't want to have the fader up, I can actually solo that and listen to it in my headphones uh, and be able to queue up that music or listen to make sure a guest is online, things like that. Um, which is a kind of a cool feature. There's also a talkback button, which uh, I'm gonna turn off my screen. So you can see there's a little talkback button. So the talkback button is uh, a talkback, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward there. So this allows you to talk back to your guests. And what it does is it actually mutes your channel from the recording or the outputs. Uh, so you're just having a conversation between the, the people that are on headphones. So again, if you're trying to cue something up, uh, maybe you've got intro music and you just wanna be like, hey, you know, we're or starting the set or whatever. Um, so you've got that talk back capability, which is pretty cool. Um, above uh, the top here too, uh, we also have headphone volume. So on the back of the unit, there's four different uh, headphone outputs for all of your different guests and they all have individual volume control. So uh, us old people that have been around here listening to rock and roll music uh, might need to have their headphones a little bit louder than uh, John here being the younger guy. So um, you have individual control over that. It's a little hard to see on the camera here, but um, the numbers for the microphones are color coded. So number one is green and uh, up here for my volume, that is also green. So it makes it very easy for somebody that's uh, more of a novice. You can just look for the colors and, ma and make the change, which is really kind of cool. Um, you also do have a monitor output here. So right now I uh, am using that to uh, feed some auxiliary stuff here. Uh, so I've got volume control for that. So I could have active monitors um, that's using a, uh, dual TRS jack or a um, 3.5 millimeter uh, output on there. So you've got the ability to just do that as a line level out or have a volume control. So if you're using this more in a studio type application and you wanna have like active monitors or something uh, for listening back, uh, you've got that. Other than that, really, you've got our touchscreen on here. It's a nice big full color touchscreen and I'll zoom in on that a little bit later. Um, then you've got your uh, record play pause button stop button and a mark button. Um, so the mark button is actually kind of nice that you, when you're recording, you can drop a marker in. So if you need to change something during the editing process later on, uh, you've got markers already uh, put onto the SD. So it makes it really cool for being able to go back, either overdub something or um, go back and edit something out. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm gonna share one picture here just so you can kind of look at the back of the screen or the back of the unit here. Uh, let's see if this works. All right, uh, nope, am I sharing? Can you see my share? All right, cool. Perfect. Uh, so back of the unit, you can see here, uh, there's four mic inputs, but they're actually quarter inch uh, XLR combo jacks. So this works really nice for Jim when he wants to plug in his keyboard, he can go directly in using some quarter inch uh, cables uh, right into the unit, which makes it super easy. Um, you'll see that, that there's that um, TRS, uh, so a dual stereo pair of TRS or a 3.5 millimeter TRRS jack uh, for bringing that audio in uh, under the phone icon. So again, you've got the TRRS jack is actually gonna give you two-way communication. So out from the unit back to that far end uh, and the far end coming back in and that's an either or. So there's a little switch back uh, on the back there. Uh, main monitor outs, again, TRS or 3.5 millimeter, and then you've got your regular quarter inch uh, headphone jack outputs. Um, power uh, is a locking power connector. Really appreciate that. There's a lot of gear out there that just has a wall wart without a locking connector, and I have moved and kicked out power supplies so many times at gigs, and it's very... Um, embarrassing i guess i wouldn't say you know it's uh the sound guy rule you know when uh, you're doing everything right nobody pays attention to you but when the, something happens you know you're you're in the spotlight there 
Uh, there's also a power button back there. Uh, another cool thing I like about the power button, you can't just turn it off. You actually have to hold it and the unit then confirms, hey, do you really want to turn off the uh, unit? So this accidentally also prevents, you know, stopping of recording and things like that. So you don't accidentally um, turn off your machine during the middle of a podcast. Uh, and then a little hard to see back there, but there is a little Kensington lock. So this was a request uh, from a lot of people that are... Uh, putting these in studio situations or schools, classroom type situations, and they want to be able to lock them down. So um, it is a very nice device. It's got really nice feel on the faders, very comfortable. I, I mean, I really like the layout of it. It's really uh, very pro, I guess I would say. You know, I use a lot of different uh, audio consoles uh, in all the different work that I do. Um, and I like this, that it's got a really good feel. It's not too small, but it's not too big. Uh, fits, you know, looking at my laptop that's sitting in front of me, it's about the, the same width as my 15 inch laptop. So makes it for a nice, really compact desk type setup. Um, Very intuitive. Do you guys have there. any questions on, uh, you know, kind of layout, the overview, anything that uh, you guys noticed that uh, you really like about it? I was just saying it's very intuitive layout. I mean, it's just, it, it, it all makes sense where everything's laid out. They're easy to find right there at, at your fingertips. So color coded pictures just exactly what i need <laughs> speaking yeah. of the color coding are you able to swap the colors on channels one two and one two three and four and also the colors on the on the pads uh colors on the pads yes you can change uh the one two three four that's locked in um into the software so it's it's just designed that you know notice which uh input is what so certainly um, makes sense that one is locked down but makes sense good question so yeah, let's dive into some of the software. That's um, another thing. When I first got this unit, um, you know, we had got some training from Tascam and stuff like that. But I am always the guy of, let's see how quickly I can get up and running with this thing without looking at a manual. So I tried to do this and I didn't look at the manual. Uh, I, I do have to admit, I eventually did have to look at the manual for one thing and that was uh, updating the firmware. There is a little uh, a process uh, to do that. So I just wanted to say I am not that great of a genius, audio genius, that I don't need any manuals. It's a hard thing to admit, but uh, the initial setup and everything, I really didn't need the manual, which to me, goes uh, speaks a lot about this device is that there's kind of simple ways of doing things and then there's more in-depth ways of doing things so users that are more novice uh, that are just getting into podcasting or broadcasting anything like that uh, you can get a good sound up and running really quickly or you can dive in and do some uh, more in-depth uh, settings there so let's uh, dive into the software here I'm going to switch to a different camera here um, Oops, not that one. Let's go there. Uh, so a little bit close up of the uh, screen here. So when you first boot up the unit, um, it is going to have you uh, ask you a couple questions. It's a little wizard thing of uh, what you want to pop up. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to turn off the unit since I'm running some audio through it. Uh, so this is the main screen that you're looking at when you are recording. It's going to give you all of your different banks uh, below showing what the names uh, and everything are for those um, pads. Um, and we'll get into those pads a little bit later because there's some different options on there of do I want a single uh, single tap? Do I want it to be able to be paused? Do I want it to be latching? Um, you've got some different options there. So, uh, and then you've got, uh, this is a touch screen. Oops, moving my camera. So everything's touch screen. Uh, it's a very bright OLED screen. So it's nice and easy to see. I've actually got this dimmed way down. Uh, so uh, the cameras can actually pick it up well, um, which, is, which is pretty nice. So if you're in an environment where there is a lot of lights, uh, you've got the ability to adjust that screen up or down. So let's go over the menu structure. It's pretty easy. Uh, everything's very graphical. So this is the main menu. Um, the first option here is setting up all of our inputs. So if I tap into input number one, you'll see all of the different options that I've got here. So I've got my SM7B hooked up to this unit. Uh, that's another thing that I really like to talk about on here is the preamps. So the preamps can allow me to hook up something like an SM7B that traditionally has a little bit lower of an output that you need to have uh, a 
preamp with a lot more headroom or you got to go with a, like a cloud lifter or something like that. So gives me the ability to plug in virtually any microphone. And you'll notice there's a setting for dynamic and condenser. So this does have phantom power on there. So if you're using a condenser microphone, uh, I can supply that 48 volts of phantom power to that unit. Um, this first input, there is uh, one option under here that says front or rear. So um, actually on the front of uh, the unit here, there is also a TRRS jack um, for the headphones. Uh, so if I was using something like uh, maybe a headset with a, a microphone, broadcast microphone on it, uh, I have the ability to plug that into the front versus the back. Uh, I'm plugged into the rear of the unit right now. My headphone, headphones are actually plugged into the front of the unit. So I don't have cords running all over the place. So it makes it uh, super easy there. Um, Below here, you've got voice settings and effects settings. So uh, the voice settings we're gonna get into, this is the easy part. I've got the tone on, it's set to deep. So uh, it gives me a little bit more of that radio announcer voice, gives me the, the lower end. So you can go in, I can change this to a, a mid, so it's gonna accentuate more of the mid tones, or I can go really bright and make my voice sound very bright and present. So kind of depending on what you're doing uh, and what the feel of your your podcast or, or what you're recording, you've got those different tones. Uh, you do also have a manual mode. So when I type on manual mode, you'll notice it popped up a little um, utility icon or a tool icon. So when you tap that tool icon, it actually gets into adjusting the individual frequencies um, of the bass and the treble. Um, you've also got an exciter that you can put on here that's going to uh, give you that radio announcer type voice. Um, but I'm going to go back. I like the dark or the deep EQ it makes me sound, uh, you know, radio uh, announcer like. Um, you also have a compressor, a hard compressor and a uh, soft compressor. I've got it on hard right now. And again, a manual mode that you can go in if you really want to tweak all of the different compression settings. So again, those pro users still have the control that they want to, but the uh, novice users have uh, an easy one button uh, type option. You can also menu over on here and there's a little bit more processing on there. There's de-essers. Uh, so if I am somebody that is super sibilant, uh, that's always fun to say, Sally shells, seashells by the seashore. Uh, I can turn on the de-esser and have some of those S's and that sibilance pulled out. So again, being able to quick tailor that and you can go in and adjust uh, you know, the threshold, the frequency, because sibilance is not the same for everyone. Uh, sometimes it's 6K, sometimes it's 8K. You've got all those adjustments uh, that you can do there. Uh, you can also listen uh, and, and do a bypass. So when you're tweaking, you can kind of go back and forth and show what's, what's going on, which is kind of nice. Um, noise suppression. Uh, this is something that is very helpful. Uh, my room, my office that I'm in right now uh, isn't, super noisy, but it's not super quiet. So I'm actually going to uh, turn this off, but you can hear a little bit more of a noise floor if Ring Central doesn't decide to pull it out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any water running or anything like that because normally my office is, has pipes in it. So sometimes it's a little bit more shocking of a demo, but uh, you've got the ability to bring that noise suppressor in. Also, it sends, uh, yeah, send, uh, seems to tame my room a little bit. My room is, you know, Hard walls right now, I don't have a lot up. I just finished my office uh, and a tile floor. So sometimes uh, turning that noise suppression on gets rid of uh, some of that roominess, I guess I would say. And then we've got ducking. Uh, so the ducking uh, allows me again to pull in that audio and it's gonna automatically pull me out and put me over the top, duck that music. But when I stop, it's gonna bring it back. So um, the cool thing too, that's uh, one of the new features that they added with the new firmware is where it says with pad. Uh, so if I turn that on, it'll actually do the ducking over the um, audio pads, uh, the sound pads. So before, uh, when it first came out, it was just the pad level was at the pad level. So you'd have to manually pull that down. Now the ducking works uh, right over top of it. So when I do the... <laughs> The air horn, I can talk over it and, and uh, still make my point uh, without the air horn taking me fully out. So that's kind of some of the processing that you've got in there. Um, nice thing when you're on this main level, you can actually just tap the next button and it's going to go through uh, mic one, two, three, and four, uh, which makes it super easy. Uh, then when we get to our uh, audio input settings, so like right now on the USB, 
uh, because we're talking, I have uh, some voice settings set up that I've got, uh, again, a de and noise suppression. Uh, and then there's some audio enhancement, which is basically kind of an EQ, but it's going to accentuate whether it's for uh, music or talk, um, or you can have that off. So gives you some options there with, with that. Also gives you a nice uh, level meter here. So we're going to switch over to our Bluetooth. So I've got my audio playing in the background. But you'll notice you've got these little yellow lines here. So this is going to give you that optimal uh, area where you should have your gain set up. So it's going to be giving you those visual cues to be able to give you a good gain structure. Uh, and then now you also have uh, ability to, to uh, change that gain, um, uh, the, the gain of the, the input uh, on, on each of those settings. Um, right now we're looking at the Bluetooth uh, setting. Um, you'll notice there's a pairing button and a connected button. Again, super easy to set up. Just put it in pairing mode, just like pairing any type of Bluetooth headphones or microphone to your phone or your device. Uh, allows you to quickly attach to that. And then again, you also have some voice settings. So you've got different type of processing uh, that you can put on all of those different inputs. So it makes it super easy from this input screen to be able to, to go through all of that. Uh, next up is the play button. Uh, so this is where all of your files are going to be stored. So it makes it really easy when you're storing and recording. Uh, we can actually uh, hit record right now and I'm going to go into record mode. You'll see it goes back to the main screen. It gives me the big red uh, button if we're, oops, if we're looking over top, uh, my big uh, record pause button is uh, lit up. Um, and gives you the easy markers. Uh, so again, I can I can pause and it's just gonna stop that recording and pause. So if you needed to you know, take a pee break or something like that, you can do that in the middle of your podcast and go back to recording right exactly where you were. So makes it super easy there. Again, that mark button, um, a little hard to see on the thing here, but this will drop a marker in uh, on those recordings. So again, for editing purposes, I can go back uh, to doing that. And then we can stop. Uh, it's always going to give me a, hey, are you sure you really want to stop recording? So it's not just an abrupt, you know, if you accidentally bust, uh, bump the button or if you were in the middle of stopping and somebody asks you something and you wanted to record it, you still got that option. So we're going to say yes. Um, immediately when you're done, it uh, it's just going to give it a normal generic uh, name of podcast and then a numerical thing, but I can change that to be whatever. Uh, and I can click OK. Uh, so when I go back to that play menu, you'll notice podcast 04 uh, was the one that we just recorded. So I can go in here. I can go in and change the names. Uh, I can delete things from here. I can play them um, back directly on the unit. So if I want to listen, um, also gives you the ability to um, fast forward um, or overwrite protection, things like that. So a lot of uh, onboard editing, which is really cool. Uh, SoundPad. So this is where all the fun things get loaded in. So uh, we have a software uh, that unfortunately I don't have pulled up on my computer right now. Uh, that is actually an editing software, but also allows you to upload uh, audio uh, to these pads. So I can take MP3 wave files. I can record audio to it. So if you had a funny catchphrase or something in your podcast, uh, you can record that. Uh, to the unit. And then you also have different methods uh, for those buttons. So uh, you'll notice there's a latch, a pause, a replay, a one shot, repeat, and touch. So these are going to be different settings based on uh, the type of sound. So maybe it's something that you want, it, maybe it's a longer sample that you want to be able to be uh, pause it in the middle. So you put that on the pause setting, you can hit play and then pause. Um, the one shot's going to be more like a, a sound effect. That's like what the. Um, uh, our horn is, uh, oops, the horn is actually latch. Uh, well, uh, but you've got different options there. Uh, the other one that's on here is, uh, there's a bleep setting, which is actually kind of fun. So I like doing this cause you can bleep me out. But the funny thing is it actually uh, mutes all my audio. So it is a true bleep uh, functionality. So uh, if somebody's getting unruly on your podcast or something, you can bleep them out. Um, so you've got a lot of different options there. You can change all the colors, do all of that, change the names. Um, and again, you've got multiple banks. Uh, so again, you can update those uh, banks and have that done. You can also go into uh, a pad and just hit record. So this is my pad.
So we're going to name that pad 17. And now if I go to pad 17, so this is my pad. So it's super easy to quickly record and do things based on whatever's going on in your show, which is, which is kind of fun. Um, I also have one of these pads, which we didn't really talk about this. I, I totally forgot about this, but uh, I have one of my pads set up to be my effect unit. So I forgot to mention there are built-in onboard effects um, on this uh, desk here. So I'm actually going to go back to my first input because we talked about the voice settings, but we never really got into effect settings. So if we go into effect setting, um, you can hear that my voice is being changed right now. Uh, it's really hard to talk with the effect setting on. Um, but you can go in and set up that effect. There's some reverbs. There's like a voice changer. There's uh, things like that. One of the cool new features that was added in the recent firmware is you can actually apply those effects to everyone's uh, microphone. So before it used to be just the, the host microphone channel number one. Now you can do that to everyone. Um, but I've actually got this on a pad here. So we can kind of see... Uh, we'll switch over. And when I am talking, I just hold on to this pad and my voice has changed. So it's kind of fun if you want to prank call people. When I was setting this up last night for our demo, I was calling my son uh, via the uh, Bluetooth and uh, messing with him when I was talking and the, the voice changing. And uh, Jim and I brought this up before. You know, you've got the. Bow, bow. Mm -hmm. You know, Ferris Bueller or oh, yeah. my favorite, the Twix commercial. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So you can have some fun. Um, kind of a cool thing too with the effects, you can also set this up in your recording that it'll bypass the effects on the recording. So if you want to be able to do things in post, you can you can apply those effects uh, versus when you're doing things live. So it gives you gives you some fun options there. Um, so that's the kind of that pad section there. Again, we've got eight banks of eight. Um, pads so keep that in mind the one thing though i do like to mention this uh so all these sounds uh except for the factory sounds uh are stored in the unit but everything else is actually stored on your sd card uh inside of the unit for the recording so uh if you are recording your pads are locked to the bank that you are on for your recording because it's uh, reading and writing to that drive at the same time. So keep that in mind that you got to make sure that uh, you've got the pads that you want for your show if you are recording internally to the device. Uh, if you are using your USB out to like go to a computer and do like multi-track recording or something like that, then you've got full access of, of your banks because it's just using that SD card as a, as a playback device. So... So that's uh, the pads. Uh, next up is kind of the hardware settings. So this is all of the meat. Again, very simple menu. Uh, we're going to start with our audio. Gives me some options. So uh, first one is USB mix minus. Uh, so if you're not familiar with mix minus, what that is doing is it's preventing um, echo and things like that. So uh, when I am using it for a uh, interface like this, um, my far end audio uh, Actually, far end audio is going to be taken out from uh, the near end audio, so it you don't create any loops uh, or uh, options. So um, you've got that. You do have an auto mixer uh, functionality on here. So again, the people that want to be a little bit more hands off uh, with recording uh, and just paying attention to their creative side while they're doing their podcast, you can put the auto mixer on there. And what that's going to do, it's going to automatically adjust the volumes of everyone. Um, you know, so if you've got a quiet speaker, it's going to kind of take care of some of that. You still have to move the faders up. Um, generally, I recommend putting out that zero mark or, or unity uh, and then having the auto mixer take over. So got that functionality. Uh, you do also have feedback prevention. This is if you're using it in a live situation. Um, it's going to prevent some of that uh, microphones being able to be fed back through a speaker, uh, which makes it really nice there. Um, on your output, uh, you've uh, those dual TRS jacks. You've got the ability to have uh, it just be a line level um, or a variable level. Um, so when line level's on, it's just going to be a line level output. You don't really have control over it. Uh, if you've got it on uh, variable, this monitor output will control um, that audio level. So you've got uh, that option there. Uh, and then with our solo mode, we talked about this earlier. Do I want this to be pre-fader or post-fader? To me, I find pre-fader is the most useful in that I can cue things up in my headphones and be able to listen to it before it goes live. So it, it makes it super easy there. 
Um, under multi-track, uh, I've got the ability with uh, the SD card, I can record multi-tracks where every person or every channel uh, that's on there is a separate audio recording. So this helps if you do do a lot of post editing uh, later on, so you can record multi-track, or if you just wanna save space and you just wanna go live and kind of run it and gun it, uh, you can record uh, two track also uh, onto the SD card. And then this is also where you would set up that uh, effects bypass. Uh, so you can have that where it uh, doesn't apply the effects to the recording only uh, on the live output. Um, you do also have a USB delay. So if you want to have uh, your USB audio time aligned to a camera or something like that to make sure that your lip sync, uh, if you're doing a video podcast, uh, you've got the ability to change that under the USB delay. And then really just this last one, what language do you want to have it in? Time, date, uh, factory reset, pretty easy. This also shows you what firmware you're on. So you can always get a reference for that. Like I mentioned, they did just release a new firmware, that 1.2. Um, and they'll be con constantly updating firmware with, with feature sets. And all those firmwares are always free, uh, which is nice. So just kind of keep an eye out on the Tascam uh, site if you have one of these. Um, I also have the ability to turn the lights up and down. Um, there is an auto power off, which is kind of nice. So if you forget to turn off your gear, the gear will shut itself down after a set period of time, uh, which you can make sure that your uh, studio is uh, a green and using less energy. Um, the last one is uh, under the advanced settings. So this was a new thing. It's a little hard to see uh, on the screen here, but uh, if I actually tap, I can actually turn on a dB level. So it gives me uh, numerical values uh, for uh, the pro guys. Uh, I can also tap that off. Uh, I can change that in that menu screen there uh, and make it really easy. Uh, also on this main screen, you'll see these little uh, yellow square that's going to show up with the squiggly line through it that's showing that i'm applying the effect uh to channel one but it's not being applied to channels two three and four so if i wanted to do it on channel four i can just tap that on and now that effect would uh, apply to those people too so again you can get kind of crazy with those effects and have some fun things with it um Last but not least is our SD card. Uh, so this shows uh, whether I've got SD recording enabled on the unit. Um, that stop confirmation, I always recommend uh, having that on. Uh, and then there's a thing called SD uh, device mode, which is just kind of cool. So if I've got this hooked up to my computer via USB-C, uh, I can turn SD device mode on and the task cam unit just shows up as a um, USB device on your computer. So you can actually open up, browse your files. You don't have to pull out the SD card. Um, you can also put like firmware on there, you know, without having to pull that card out, which just makes it nice. Uh, as we know, a lot of computers don't have the SD readers in them anymore. Um, although thank you, Mac, for bringing that back on the new ones. Uh, so you have to get out the adapter. So this just makes it a little bit easier to transfer those files on and off the unit, which makes it, uh, makes it pretty cool. And you can also do like uh, erasing your SD card or formatting it. Uh, there's a quick erase or a full erase. So it's just gonna uh, make sure you zero everything out. Um, so it makes it uh, super easy there. So that's kind of the, the, you know, the menu structure. Again, it's, it's super graphical, super easy to look at, um, makes it uh, easy to use. So I guess, you know, like, what do you guys have for questions? You know, anything come in over the chat? Yeah, uh, Sean, I've, I've got one for you really quick. Uh, is, I know that this is more of a podcasting unit, so it's not necessarily traditionally in these types of things, but is there feedback suppression on this unit? Yeah, so there's the feedback suppression uh, under the menu there. So that's going to help when you are using this in a live um, situation. Uh, it's going to prevent that. Um, and again, it's it's more, again, geared towards podcasting. Um, so it's, it's a situation where you'd have uh, monitors on there uh, that will allow you to, to kind of pull that out. So that's that setting in the, in the menu structure there. Awesome. So we do have a question. Yeah, we just uh, actually just did a demo with the customer the other day that uh, has, uh, well, they record music. Uh, they actually do Indian music. Uh, so they bring in people to their house. Uh, so he was kind of using it as a live mixer. They wanted to multi-track record, um, and, but sometimes they, you know, set up a PA and stuff. So they use that, that output, that live output uh, on there. So it's kind of a, kind of a fun one. So Sean, we have a, we have a question from Vernon here and I know uh, some, a lot of the gear that we have or carry it could be anything, even video. 
is limited yeah. to an S, the size of the SD card that you can put in there. Uh, Vernon's question is, what's the maximum storage of SD Ooh. card? Good question. I honestly don't remember, but uh, I have, if I can figure out where my SD slot is. I assume you have like a 64 gig, 30. I actually have a 256 gig card in there right now. Uh, oh, wow. And that still allows me for recording. Hence why I have like 38 hours of recording available. <laughs> so uh, that's awesome. On here. So yeah, I, I don't actually know if there is a theoretical limit, but um, oh, looks like Sean Daly who's watching in, uh, he said 512 uh, is the max. So thank you, Sean. Uh, Sean, Sean works for Tascam, so hopefully, hopefully I'm doing a good job there, Sean. Um, well, hello, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean and Sean. Uh, but yeah, so Sean. you've got that. So 512. So gobs and gobs of recording for a portable device. Awesome. I, I, you know, this is an extremely impressive unit. The number of features that you have there, it's got to be thousands of dollars, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> and... It's not thousands and thousands of dollars, which is awesome. Um, I actually, when we, we first got these in, when these were announced, uh, I ordered a sample and this is uh, how I do my podcasts and uh, webinars and everything like this. This lives on my desk all the time. Uh, so I, I fell in love with it right away and uh, it, it's super easy, which I like. There's also a, a cool bag Cool bag is always good. That you can get for it. So if you are portable, um, it's actually a well thought out bag. You can actually leave the uh, mixer in the bag and the lid full, fully folds over and exposes the um, connectors. So you can uh, make it really portable and easy to use. Um, so if you're doing like mobile podcasts or, or something like that, easy, easy to tote around. Sweet. So Sean, the, you know, me being the kid in me comes out when you start hitting those pads, you know, the bleep, yep. the horn, all that. What is... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh no, you're more than well. Give me, give me a good round of applause so I can feel better. Yes. Today. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. So what are, what are some of the, the, the sounds that come with it? Do you have like a, a right answer, wrong answer, buzzer? Yeah. So building? built in, you've got the applause. You've got an alarm button, which is kind of an interesting one. The obligatory air horn. Yeah. Which is John's favorite, as we talked yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite. Um, we've got the brass, which is kind of the, the wah, wah, wah. So, you know, when you make a bad dad joke or something like that. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you do have a little drum beat. So this is kind of a good one to show, like, kind of a longer sample. And this one goes on for a while. And as you can hear, again, I got that ducker over it. So that's going on there. We got the heartbeat. So when we ask the real uh, tough questions, you can put the right. heartbeat on there. <laughs> uh, the bleep, which again is to censor people and that can actually pull out that audio. So I really think this is a awesome product though. <laughs> um, you've got the ability to do that. And then you've got that effect setting button mapped. Um, Again, for the voice changer. I always love using the voice changer. Um, there's reverbs and fun things like that in there also. Sweet. Uh, that bleep function. Now, does yeah. that, that runs across all audio. Correct. It's all audio. It basically mutes all of the uh, Every single inputs. guest. Inputs. Yeah. All the mic inputs. Does the music keep going if you're using it? Ooh, that's a good question. Let's, let's try this. Uh, I'll bring in some audio. Nope, it's all all inputs. So, so we're just gonna mute everything, so we can censor the heck out of everything. So you can censor the music even. That's all. <laughs> yeah, you can censor the music even. So. DMCA is DMCA is wagging their fingers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we got a, we got a, a comment here. It looks like from Chris. It seems like Jim Cramer's Mad Money. <laughs> nice. Jim Cramer's Mad Money. Love it. So, uh, I, I, this really solves just about everything you need for, for podcast. It is, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a 
broadcast station. Um, we didn't really get into the software, but it's a free software that you can download. Um, and the cool thing is, is, you know, a lot of people that are getting into podcasting sometimes aren't the most technical people. So it's kind of daunting when you're saying, oh, well, here, multi-track this, get this software, record here, edit your podcast. You know, a lot of the people even, you know, there's services out there that edit podcasts for people because uh, it is something technical that's going on. Uh, and the, the companion software that comes with this, the cool thing, it can be run on an iPad, it can be run on a computer, Mac, PC, all platforms. So it, it allows you to do simple edits, simple cutting, moving things around, um, but it's built for novice users, but gives you a lot of pro features. So it makes it really easy that you don't need to go out and be like, oh, I'm going to you know, have to buy Logic or something like that to be able to edit my podcast. Even if you're just doing the recording of like two track to the SD card and then pulling it into the app and trimming your front and your end and putting some intro music on there. It makes it super easy uh, to do that and publish your um, probably publish your podcast or, or get it to a, a point where you need to, to publish it. And it's got some nice tools in there, like uh, normalizing and some things like that to get uh, your best quality uh, without a lot of technical, uh, technical knowledge, I guess I should say. Yeah. And then, so even aside from that, uh, obviously it's built for podcasting. It was designed from the ground up to do that, but it was also seems simultaneously designed to be kind of utilitarian. Obviously the focus is, is in podcasting, but I could see a, a lot of other scenarios in which that might work. Do you have any, like, what, what other places do you think these mixed casts might work really well in? Yeah, so we're seeing it, yeah, obviously podcasting first, but we're starting to see a lot of people that are just using it as a quick, inexpensive uh, multi-track recorder um, for those live type situations. Um, again, there's been some small bands that have taken this out of like, ah, I've just got a couple inputs. Um, a lot of people like recording uh, live sets and stuff. So you could actually get away with using this at you know, like a small cafe as like a little live mixer, but multi-tracking and recording. Um, you know, a lot of uh, House of Worship people now are doing uh, podcasts. Um, and the nice thing is, is this can be set up in portable. Um, I have a lot of different devices. You know, I've got sound device or recorders. I've got USB interfaces for my computer. But a lot of times, some of that's it's just a lot to carry around and set up. And this is the one thing in the box. I have everything that I need. Uh, minus the microphones, you know, just plug in my microphones and plug in my headphones and I'm ready to go. I can multi-track, I can use it live. It, so it, it, it makes it really versatile from that aspect. Um, I can also see this being used, you know, from a lot of people like, um, you know, radio and stuff, you know, like I'm a serious XM subscriber because I like listening uh, when I'm driving around all the time. But, you know, a lot of times you, there's those on location uh, you know, hey, I'm going to the X Games or whatever, and I'm doing interviews. Um, and this is like the perfect, again, all-in-one type thing versus bringing a mixer and bringing interfaces and all this stuff. I've got one one device. So kind of fits a lot of different areas. Makes me makes me want to start my own podcast and go on to uh, Spotify and see if I can get some of the musicians back on there. <laughs> the gym hour. I, I like it. You should do that, Jim. You know, we could go deep into the, the musical histories uh, of the Madison area. Oh, we know that's really that. exciting. That actually would be very interesting. I would listen to that. I, that would be I think cool. we should do it. Maybe we're, maybe we're starting a podcast. Like, I'm, there I'm we down. go. And we're down. We got it. All right. We just need to come up with a name. And it's always fun if anybody's ever started a band to come up with a name oh, yeah. for, for yes. a band. So, podcast would be good. All right. So, Vernon uh, mentioned. Uh, and you know, Vernon, I, this, he mentioned the port of capture X8. Look at that. Would you look at that? Sitting here, right here, ready to, ready to be talked about. That but I an, think that's a great idea, Vernon. I, so do I, I am I totally too. in agreement. That is a fantastic piece of gear. I have just blown away by that. So yeah, really wonderful piece. So Sean, I'm going to tie you down live. Will you do a webinar? <laughs> yes. Okay. As long as Vernon commits to being able to watch it. Or at least watch it later. So. Yeah, and type in the chat so let us know. Make sure you're going to be there, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> um, so we hit this. You know, I suppose I better put a little pitch in here. Why not? Right. We do have the 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 uh, the Mixcast Four on sale currently at, at Full Compass, and we have stock available. Uh, so if you're interested, reach out to any, your sales rep or any one of us, or contact me via email as well. Uh, if you need to know more, John, do you have any other questions or you see any, uh, Vern did confirm he, he's going to be here. Yeah, well, so, all right, he's cool. 
Good. Vernon did confirm. I am. Uh, I don't have many more questions than that. I think you, Sean, you did an excellent one, job. Uh, translating to music, you know, like recording music. Um, yeah, there we go. And again, uh, I like this because of the the wide range on the preamps, giving you the quarter inch inputs and things like that. Um, it does lend itself uh, well to recording music. So uh, I am going to now have to convince Jim here on his. I'm going to get him one. He's going to have to record his next uh, live stream through this. Uh, so I, we'll have some real life experience for you that we can I, uh, I am all for challenges. Absolutely. I will. I will do that. I do. You know, while you're mentioning that, I did. My, my brain always shoots off into all these tangents. What if, what if I'm totally into karaoke and I have karaoke tracks and I play that and I can I can sing along to it and, and record that as well? Just if I just yeah. use it again. Yeah, so with, again, with you, uh, like typically what I would do is turn off that ducking, you know, so you don't want that audio to duck. You want to be able to hear that. Um, but yeah, you could bring that in via USB or your phone, uh, or Bluetooth. You've got a ton of different options there. Uh, and you can bring that in, mix your channels. Um, again, you could throw that like a reverb on there if you wanted to in the effects setting to give you the, you know, that big... Uh, Big so, karaoke sound that you want. So, so, so I could have the the Doobie Brothers playing, and I could pretend I'm Michael McDonald and and, exactly. and sing over the top. I kind of have a feeling you do that a lot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> that we're like supposed that. to know. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it, is there any more questions from anybody out there? Uh, we're running close to the end of the the podcast webinar. Here. Yeah, Eugene brought up a, a good point uh, on your karaoke. So in the pad, you can actually have a track on one of these pads that's set up for you. So you can be your Michael McDonald uh, on the push of a button. You can be ready to go at any time. Just, that's that's right. Yep. And how long is recording on that? I forgot. Did you answer that? Uh, Ooh, did... I didn't answer that question. I don't know that one off the top of my head. Uh, the 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 pros out there, come on, Eugene or Sean, give me a give me a lifeline here. <laughs> Depends on the SD card. Well, I got 256 gigs in here, so hopefully I should be able to have uh, a long track. Um, that's actually a good question. So we'll, we'll see if uh, one, of, one of the Tascam guys join in uh, and gives me that. Uh, but yeah, kind of depends on how much room you've got on your SD card. So if you're running low, um, you know, you're not going to have to. Uh, Only restricted by so. the size of the SD card. So you Port, could have, uh, you know, the other like shot. Right said Fred, I'm too sexy, like on loop for hours. Uh, and, just and hours. Play back. Or just hours. So you might be able to fit thick as a brick on there. <laughs> thick as a brick. Nice. So <laughs> showing my age there. <laughs> yeah. Two, two full sides of an album for one song. <laughs> for those of you that are not sure what an album is, you can email me. <laughs> John, you know, you're young things. enough. <laughs> I'm young and no, come on. Al the album is the listening experience. Yes, okay. Oh, it's back. You the know. final. Although it really is back. back. It's come back in a big way. The especially young artists now. I'm seeing a lot are really focusing on building an album experience, which I'm I'm excited about. It's cool. We've we've lost all that fun excitement of you know when you got an album. Uh, you know, I grew up in the CD age, but you could open it up and look at all the album artwork. It was more about the experience. You don't get yeah. that nowadays with everything streaming. It's, you know, it's, yeah. that's half the fun of it. Yeah. And lots of artists are starting to go back to that. They recognize that they, the people like you, people like us grew up and we're like, Oh, these things were so cool. Why, why are we still not, why are we not using them? These are tools on their own. So lots of, lots of young people are starting to put out vinyls on everything. And yeah, it's really wonderful. Exactly. It's, so, Sean, I, I think we're we're at the end here. Thank you so much um, for joining us today. It's it's been a pleasure. A great piece of gear. Good to learn more about it. There you go. Round of applause. <laughs> wonderful, <Thanks>. wonderful. <laughs> That's that is the button that I will absolutely overuse. <laughs> <laughs> and then if John shows up, I'll I'll hit the horn. So <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, thank you, John. When you're as doing well. your live stuff, you can also record somebody yelling "Freebird," you know, so you can oh, have geez. that, you know, because yeah. it's not a gig unless you, you know, get the "Freebird" request. So, right? Did you say "free beer"? Sorry. Yes, "free yeah. beer" request. <laughs> "Free beer" request. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us. Uh, I think, I think, I think. Yes, I think we'll wrap things up. Sean, once again, thank you, John. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Um, we have. Uh, 
uh, if you have any further questions, f folks, feel free to email me um, directly at jrip at fullcompass.com. Um, if I can't answer those questions, I, you know, I always go to John or I can, sometimes I go to Sean. So I know Sean <laughs> knows way more than I do about this product. So, uh, so feel free to email me if you have any questions and don't forget to fill out that survey, uh, at the end, let us know. I know Porta Capture, that's the next one, right, Sean? You committed to it. Vern committed to it. John, you in on that one? Of course. All right, perfect. I'll commit to it as well. So we've got four people already lined up for the next one nice. uh, or Love soon. It. I don't know if it's the next one, but thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. Have a great day. We shall see you at the next webinar.